National League win totals. We've got the number it comes from. Bet MGM, the king of sportsbooks. Use code Just Baseball, and they'll match your deposit up to fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> Don't you want free coin to play all these bangers? I got a lot of picks. I'm not going to lie. I have twenty eight units pending in futures, and a lot of them have to do with the win totals. Yeah. So my feeling right now, my stomach kind of hurts. I'm kind of nervous. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a lot of money pending. But I feel really good about these bets. Fair. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go by division, and we're going to go by predicted win total. Yep. So we're going by the number. So, like, we're starting with the NL East. Drum roll, please. Atlanta is the highest. Drum roll, please. Washington is the lowest. So Atlanta is going to be the first one we talk about. Washington is going to be the last one that we talk about. Then we go NL Central, and then we go NL West. And then we've got the American League coming to you on Friday. But let's start with the Atlanta Braves. I'm tracking... Who has over and under if this is turning your brain into mashed potatoes and you're like, I don't remember who had what. We're going to have graphics from our kick-ass graphics team headlined by Brandon Anderson who's going to put all this together. Um, we're we're going to have that on our social media channels. Um, or or just listen through this episode like seven or eight times just to yeah, put it mentally in your it's, brain. It's like when you're really looking time. at the graphics, cheating. I mean, you should be listening to this episode yeah, over you know and what? over and over again. Cut the graphics. Yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah, cut so we're the canceling graphics. Scrap Scrap it. Scrap it. Scrap it. The Atlanta Braves, 101.5 is the projected win total. For my money, this is the best team in baseball. I've seen other outlets say that this is the best team in baseball on paper um, that I really love. I, I think what the Athletic put together power rankings and, and Atlanta was number one over the Dodgers. It's the Braves and Dodgers, the Braves and Dodgers, 101.5. What say you, Arm Late? This was one where it's like anytime it's over 100, I just I want it. I want to take the under naturally. Yeah. Just naturally. And also, I mean, Peter, you could probably add some context. Like, we're, we're, we're going to be diving into the baseball side of it mostly. But I feel like naturally Vegas is going to bump up the really good teams a little bit extra. Is that fair? 100% it's fair. So what I did is Fangraphs has like six different projection systems. And they give out like, and Pakoda might be a little bit higher yeah. than this one. So what I did is I averaged them all together, got one number. But that number is really easy to get, right? So you have to have a little bit of your own mind, and it's like, well, do I think this team could overperform their expectations? Do I think they could underperform? And what it's always did to answer your question is, the Braves and the Dodgers are always going to be a little bit overinflated. You're going to have to pay a little bit of a premium in order for to the pre- bet, <laughs> exactly, in order to bet on the Braves yeah. or the Dodgers. I remember, so the biggest win total of all time, the highest, was the 98 Yankees at 104 and a half, right? So if we're on the Dodgers or we're on the Braves, like you're putting them up against some of the greatest teams of all time. <laughs> That's pretty so crazy. So if we say we like the Braves under, that doesn't mean that we don't like the Braves. They might win 98 games and go under by They might win 101 games. games. They might win 101 under. and go under. That said, I have the over. <laughs> I know I kind of like the open for the yeah, so I think they go crazy. That's what I got, you know. And and honestly, it sounds really funny, and it probably sounds pretty minuscule. But I'm trying to find a leak, right? Like cause I, I look at it like a like a ship, right? And yeah. this is a well oiled machine in terms of like it, it is a sturdy ship. Yes, it's but, not the Titanic. No, it is down not. to the manager, like Brian Sticker. Everything. Like everything. Is I just don't want to find a little hole that can be poked at the screwdriver. There was one, and it was Jared Kelnick in the outfield, and I still think it is. I, I really what am concerned about. Maybe. I've yeah, no. seen him this spring. Oh, he's been so the Adam Duvall addition yeah. really, I, and I, I'm not saying that made or broke, like broke it for me. I may have still gone over, but this made me like calmly do it. Like I went yeah. over without my traps being like tight because it just was like, okay, that is another great contingency plan in case Kalnick's not performing. Because I mean, left field, I mean, corner outfield's a big spot. And I know that they've they've won it by kind of piecing it together yeah. there in the past. I mean, when it's a Travis is playing with yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a big spot. So I, I lo- and Duvall, before he jacked his wrist up, was playing out of his mind in Boston. So you put him in this role where he's still going to get a ton of ABs. You have this platoon with Kalnick. If Kalnick gets yeah. hot, we know what he can do. I think when you look at the lineup, it's unbelievable. And then the Chris Sale addition. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't need to be prime Chris Sale. If he's low, low to mid threes, what this does for their rotation, Freed only had 14 starts last year. You'd assume he's going to throw more than that. And then <laughs> I'm interested to hear your thoughts. I'm kind of in on Reynaldo Lopez. Like mm-hmm. I'm in on this new, like Jordan Hicks. I'm, I'm excited to see it happen too. With Hicks, I would be fine with it if he was like their fifth option. You know, it, w- but before with the Giants, it was like he might be their second best option. Now he's their third. So it's a little bit better. 
I, I think Lopez is your five with AJ Smith Schauber waiting there if you need him. I, I really like what they've got going on here. And then we know the bullpen's always going to be great. And then you're talking about Smith Schauber, like Bryce Elder was just option. Oh, yeah. Oscar you know was just option too. So they have four different guys. If one of them clicks like, like Bryce Elder did for them last year, they're going to roll because Spencer Schrider, I think, is going to win the Cy Young this year. Max okay. Freed could win this Cy Young this year. Yeah. Charlie Morton is still Charlie Morton. Chris Sale is still Chris Sale. And then you have four options, and then the bullpen is just overwhelming. Their nine-hitter Michael Harris, I think, could lead the league in hits. <laughs> They're just so overwhelming from top to bottom. And the way I make my number, the way I adjust it off the Fangraphs projection is, where is the game where you fade the Braves? Like, if Chris Sale is pitching, like, do you want to go against no. it? Maybe his arm, maybe you see a dip in below, maybe that's the game. Or maybe Morton but you're not going to be fading Strider. You're not going to be fra- fading Freed. And I actually think Smith Schauber ends up winning that fifth job and ends up being a very good starter. I agree. So I just don't see where the losses start to happen. And if a guy like Matt Olson is struggling, Austin Riley probably isn't. Let's say Ozzy Albies is having a tough day. Ronald Acuna Jr. probably isn't. There's just, it's, it's never, not, over, not, it's, yeah. it's too overwhelming. Except when he dies for a minute and, yes, and comes yeah, back. He gets hit by a pitch. And, yeah. My question for you, Jack, is like, where, Everyone talks about regression. It's the most overused word, I think, when it comes to like and how is yeah. like analyzing sports now. But who regresses from this like Braves team? You look at the lineup. Uh, the only guy that I could reasonably Arcea. say in the lineup, Arcia. Okay, I got two then. It would be Arcia or Ozuna. Yeah, but I feel what if like, Ozuna goes crazy again? I mean, well, Ozuna, Ozuna is the most protected forty homer guy in Major yeah. League history. Yeah, and Arcia, like he's still gonna go pick it. Hey, yeah, if that's your nine hitter. Yeah, like. The, there is there's zero deficiency, and there were a couple of different points that I said, okay, I do think that they're the best team in baseball. When they traded for Chris Sale, the thought crept into the back of my mind. I was like, okay, this might be the best team in baseball. When they optioned A.J. smith Schauber, the Braves have bought themselves the ability for me to just assume that they're doing the right thing. I question so many moves that I see, but when the Braves do it, at this point, and like, hey, two years ago, I probably would have questioned this to be like, what the hell are they doing? But with what the Braves have done over the last three years, since they won the World Series in 2021, I have stopped questioning anything that they do because they always make the right decision. Always. And speaking about those right decisions, at the All-Star break, let's say one of their stars goes down, how many more GMs do you have more faith in than Alex Anthopoulos yeah, to make the right yeah. move? Like That's why when Arm, you at the beginning of the Braves stuff, you were like from top to bottom. It's like it extends longer than just who's yes. on the field the, the coaching staff to Correct. the front office, and they're all on the same page, and that's why the Braves are going to be perennial fav- for favorites until Ronald Acuna Jr. retires. So, yeah. so yeah, like, thought number two is when they optioned AJ. I was like, okay, yeah, this is probably the best team in baseball. The the thing that really drove the idea home for me was when they optioned Bryce Elder because yeah. that meant they had a decision. Yeah. Like, they, they decided that Reynaldo Lopez was the guy, and I want to run you through the game log for Reynaldo Lopez this spring. Two innings, one run. Three innings, no runs. Three innings, no runs. Three and two-thirds, one run. Five innings, two runs. He's going to be awesome, and we have to accept that. And, like, it may take injury to get a guy that I love and A.J. smith Schauber into the rotation. They are so deep, and the thing that, like, I'm going to beat dead horses over and over again during these win total things, starting pitching depth is the one reason that I go over teams, and they have starting pitching depth when the Dodgers do not clean sweep over the last thing I want to say before we keep moving on because I fear that sometimes we give a really good pitch and then people are very incentivized to go bet this I want to make something clear I did not bet the over right you don't bet but arm I don't think you bet the over either we're just giving our leans like I make the number 101 and a half I think it's a fair line I would lean under or over excuse me for the exercise but I did not bet on the Braves. I will let you know, and I'm sure Arm will too, when we actually did make bet. Yes, what I would, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know like my confidence interval of like whether I would actually slack some money down on it or not, even if I haven't you know done that yet with MGM. But I agree, that's a very important like clarification to make because like 101 and a half is freaking high. Yeah, it really high. high. And, and there's a lot of other ga- like team totals that I'm just going to like better. And just yeah. for example, the Braves were plus 105 to win the division last year. They're now minus 260. It's a completely oh different God. line. We saw what the Braves did last year. That's why you're paying a premium. So it's not worth the value. However, we're sitting here thinking to ourselves, I don't see how it goes under unless something horribly wrong happens. It, 
Should we talk Phillies? Yeah, it took us exactly 10 minutes to get through the Braves. One <laughs> team, 10 minutes. Right, That's going to be so far away the longest that we go <laughs> on a single team. So we jump to the Philadelphia Phillies. 89 and a half is their projected win total. I'll give you mine right now. Over, man. Like, I love this lineup. I love a healthy Harper for 162 in his position that he got comfortable at last year. Um, again, like, I doubt the war abilities of Nick Castellanos and Kyle Schwarber, but I ignore them because of vibes. Like, they're the vibe team. And I'll take the over on the vibe team because, like, if I didn't do that, what bit have I committed to the last three years? No, I agree with you. I make the line 90 and a half, so I have one win of value towards the over. However, I did not bet it because I think it's around what they'll be. But I do think the Phillies are one of those teams where, come postseason time, I want to invest. You still have to go through the bank. But in the regular season, the Phillies can go through slides where they're a big swing and miss type team that gets into holes. And then you always felt like the past Phillies bullpens would blow it maybe at the end. But the reason I'm more confident about the Phillies in the regular season compared to past years is because of all the breakouts in the bullpen. Jeff Hoffman now throws 99, yeah. and it looks incredible. Yeah. Orion Kirkering has one of the goriest. Yeah. <laughs> Orion. Orion Kirkering <laughs> has one of the craziest yeah. sliders I've seen. So the bullpen, especially with Jose Alvarado at the top, if they can withstand this regular season, there's going to be a lot more close games, and then the Phillies have so much power, where then that home run just takes them over the top. You finally have a fully healthy Bryce Harper. We forget. Back in 21, when he put up a 170 WRC. The MVP. He was the MVP with the Phillies, right? And that was when he was fully healthy. He feels like it now. I know it's a new position, but first base, it's probably going to be easier. This is one of the deepest Phillies teams I've seen in a really long time with still that major thump at the top. I'm glad you mentioned the depth. That's honestly what put me over the top this time because I, when, we, when you look at the corner outfield situation, especially last year, it was Schwarber being in the outfit. I, there's so much value to having Schwarber at the DH spot. Oh like these are the things that we, I think, us included, but like uh, fans especially too. Like you look at the numbers, you look at the stats. You don't really think about that ball that sailed over Schwarber's head that would have been an out and turned into a double. Yep. And like that is a lot more damaging than Schwarber's double that'll hit the next inning. Yes. Is is helpful, and that's why the WAR totals are what they are. So you have Schwarber now in a DH spot, which I, I've said in the past, I think is going to result in more offense as well. I think he's going to have an even better year offensively than he had last year. But the value that they're going to have defensively now, but the depth, you mentioned it, and I, I love that point, because Whit Merrifield was the perfect addition mm -hmm. because he can plug into center yep. if you need it. He can plug into a corner. I, I kind of think he's going to play center for them. I, I wonder what Johan Rojas is going to look like. I don't mean to interrupt you. I just... He provides depth. I think he might just be their center. He might end up doing that. And, they, you know, if, if Pache or Rojas doesn't really emerge, I don't love Rojas. I think Pache may end up being a better option. Uh, but I think Merrifield fitting in there. And Mundo Sosa is one of the better infield, like, bench pieces you've got. I, I really like what they've got going there. And then the rotation. How much time did Suarez miss last year? I feel like a fair amount. Decent amount. Decent amount. As my co dog comes into the equation. Teddy. Uh, but when you look at, like, the rotation side of things, that's why I do get a little nervous because I do like, obviously, Zach Wheeler and Noah. We talked about some of the top duos that you're going to have in the game. But Rangers Suarez, I think, is really solid three if he's yeah. healthy. Walker, Christopher Sanchez, I'm nervous about that. Painter is going to be out for the year. Mick Abel, we're still waiting to see if he can be a, a big league starter. The yeah. command's still a work in progress. I'm not baking him into these considerations. Make your Gary, too. Same the Gary's thing. even more erratic. Yeah. That's where I'm a little nervous. The bullpen breakouts hedge that. But that's why I think it's almost, I wish I could take a push almost. No, exactly. I go over slightly just because of the health and the more well-rounded position player aspect. But I, and also Wheeler had like a high threes ERA. We forget yeah. how good he was in the postseason. Right. I, I do think that ultimately they're going to go over, but maybe by one or two games. I think this is razor. That's why when we did the X Factors episode, I thought Christopher Sanchez was such a big X oh, Factor. Like if yeah. he can just continue what he did last year, he didn't even throw 100 innings, but it was a high threes ERA. If he gives you that over 150, a four, he I, over 150. He's, he's projected on Fangraphs right now around a 4-3 ERA at 140. Yeah. We're taking that. So if he can accomplish that, I, I I don't like Tywin Walker at all, but I love Rangers. So if those four can win more games than not, the Phillies should be a 90-win team. That's why there's a slight lean, but again, I'm not betting. And you'd imagine they maybe go out and get a, get a pitcher at some point during the year. They do have more prospect capital, I think, than they've had in some previous years. They haven't really traded at all. And, you know, you know Dombrowski will do it when it's when the opportunity's oh, yeah. right. 
they do have pieces. Yeah. You know, they could trade Abel. They they could yes. trade Crawford. They have other guys that they could move. They have yep. their core already up there. So that's the other thing. I'm always going to count on the Phillies to, to go make a move, especially this Phillies team. Right. So I could see them going out and getting another pitcher later on. Too. Well, even a small move like the Lorenzen thing. Like, why can't you go get 2024's version of Michael Lorenzen? I think that makes a bunch of sense. All right, I'm going to nip it in the butt. I'm going to give us our first under. We've gone over, like, all of us on the first two teams. The New York Mets are at 81 and a half. I go under that. And I was just talking with our video czar, Will Cohen. I love you. I love you. And you gave me the the lineup that was announced on Tuesday. And you said, this feels World Series-y. And it was like, it was awesome. It was the A-team. It was Lindor, Alonzo, Nimmo. I, Harrison Bader was the nine-hitter. That's fun. And I said, okay, now now do the pitching. No. No. That pitching is so bad. So bad. I love Diaz in the ninth, but there are eight innings before that. And, man, I don't feel good about it at all. Maybe they should stretch Diaz back out. I mean, You know he threw a complete game in the minors. Exactly. I think back in 2016. Maybe 2014. 2014. Edwin Diaz, opening day starter. You heard it here first. I mean, no, the rotation is I'm, – I'm, I'll be short and quick. Under, the rotation is brutal. Yes. And I just – I can't – Kodai Sango was the nail in the coffin. And I, I hope he's back, and I hope he can throw plenty. But no matter what, it's going to be less than, if, than a healthy Sango. If throw. Sango was healthy, my shoulder's tense at this number. Sango's not healthy right now. I have no idea how bad it is, but, like, he just loosened up my shoulders. I'm like, yeah, under. I don't even love the bullpen out, uh, outside of the, the, the guys in the, a couple guys in the back end and, of course, Edwin Diaz. I like the lineup a lot. I do think a lot of these young guys are going to perform. I think Francisco Alvarez ascends to be one awesome. of the, the better young catchers in the sport. But I, I just there's no way you are surviving with Jose Quintana, Luis Severino, Sean Manaya, Adrian Hauser, Tyler McGill. It's just not happening. I, I just, I cannot see it. I can't see them winning even 82 games. And that's why Peter's going, oh, I, I, I make the number 82 and a half. So when I was looking at this Mets team, I think their offense is going to be better than last year. Yes, I agree with you. I think Brett Beatty is going to go from the worst qualified third baseman in Major League Baseball crazy. to not the worst qualified third baseman in Major League Baseball. Like, I think he could take that next step up. I also think Mark Vientos right. is going to make an impact in the— Why, why are you doing this to me? Yeah, he knows what he's doing right now. Know, but think about this for a second. It's like, yes, there was problems last year, and Ed, they didn't have Edwin Diaz for the entire year. We talk about how bad the starting pitching is. It's bad, but it's there are guys in there where you might look up and they went five innings, two runs— and now we have a better bullpen, even adding a guy like Shintaro Fujinami, who I do like that add in the bullpen. I do. May also it, like six. Let's say uh, Jorge Lopez bounces back a little bit. They still have Adam Ottavino. There are better guys in the bullpen than there were last year. I expect the offense to take a little bit of a step up. And right now, looking at a rotation without Kodai Senga in originally looks much worse than it is. But we do expect Kodai Senga to return sooner rather than later. I think if the rotation cannot be terrible, I see a path to around 500. But I think what puts me over the top is a little bit of the upside from the bullpen and the upside from some of their young core. I'm The reason I am not betting this is I have no idea what they're going to do with the deadline. This is a That's bridge they could, year, they could, right? They could like, do they, if they have a good start to the season... Does Dave Stearns and Steve Cohen say, wait a minute, let's go out of pitcher right now or something like that? I don't know if it's going to happen. That's why I didn't bet it. But I will say my number is higher than the 81 and a half. And I think a lot of people are down. But I think this team is more talented than what that number says. Peter did spur a thought in my mind that does make me a little nervous about the under is that I do have some faith in some of these upper minor Mets arms. Yeah. Uh, Christian Scott, I think, is... The type of pitcher that would come up to the big leagues and have some success right away, kind of like a Bryce Miller type where it's outlier fast, not outlier, right? that word's also overused, but very unique fastball, nasty change up, can turn over at least a lineup twice and, and give you five, six quality innings. I like Tidwell. I like Vassal. I think a few of those guys can plug in and be serviceable back end arms. If that happens, then all of a sudden this Mets team can go over. That's a big if, but at the same time, like I do think Peter makes a pretty compelling argument. Yeah. I don't feel, and we have not hit one that I'm confident in yet. But I'm going to go under just because I, I think the pitching's a disaster. We have not hit one that I'm confident in either, but the next team is my most confident bet that I have ever placed. Yeah, all right. You get yours over quick because people could just watch a 30-minute video. Yeah. What, what, did, what did you go with? Uh, I, on the Mets? Yeah. Under. Under. No, under. No, yeah, 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 starting pitching, terrible. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So 
my biggest bet of my life is the Miami Marlins under 78 and a half wins. I made a 27 minute YouTube video about one <laughs> bet. So go Bunch watch it. points. <laughs> one run rule, right? They were the seventh best team in one run games in the history of Major League Baseball, the history of the game. And it wasn't because they're the Brewers, right? With 17 different electric arms so they can hold those leads. The Marlins don't have that. It was, in my opinion, pure luck. And when we look at those top seven teams, they average eight losses more the next season because that luck just tends to revert back to the mean. And then we look at the current roster and then I make my win total way lower than 78 and a half. Now it's down to 77 and a half because of the Yuri Perez news. Yeah. I would still go way under that because I make the line closer to 73 and a half, 74 and a half. I, I think, and the reason why I factored in Sixto being back. Yes. I have factored that in. And <laughs> I even lowered it more because that means they're giving him more starts. Also, you know, those I do want to just issue an apology. I said Sixto on this show would not make the team. I said no chance. Because I watched that guy throw 83 multiple times and then after you, years. And then you watched him throw 90. And then I watched him throw 98 <laughs> in person. I for, I want to apologize to Sixto Sanchez. I want to apologize to Sixto Sanchez supporters. Um, there are a lot of us out freak, there. Yeah. <laughs> he's a freak. <laughs> he is clearly, a freak. He's that, clearly a freak. Like, yeah. And if he's just maybe doing basic arm care now after two shoulder surgeries and he's whipping 99, I, I am. it's really awesome to see him back. Yes. Yes. Like he was a frustrating player because the work ethic would be, but like, yeah, that's just him. And that's his own decision. He was never a bad guy or never right. did anything bad in the club. Yeah. Or it was just like, Oh my God, what's so good. Right. Do what is something he, to help yourself? What did he do to you? Nothing. Nothing. What is he doing to himself? A lot of, a lot. <laughs> so now I think he's opened his eyes and, and it's been fun to see, but I just had to get that out of the way, but I'm with Peter on the under. Um, I, and that was before all of these arms have gone down. Now you look at the pitching situation where it was Ardo's at the top. They're going to throw a puck in there. Yeah. I hope that he can survive, but, you know, I, I think ability-wise he can survive, but innings-wise, I mean, it's about a reliever who's had trouble staying on the field. Rodgers has not been able to stay healthy and then piece it together. Whoever you want, Ryan Weathers, Max Meyer, whatever. Yeah. They're piecing it together. I, I just I don't feel good about that situation at all. I think some of the back-end guys may – Take a half step back. I think Tanner Scott's phenomenal. I think he's great. Is he going to be the best reliever? I think he's arguably the best reliever in baseball last year. Was I don't know if he does that again. And you know already ninety one and MLB the show for Tanner Scott. Yeah, according and to people were like, oh, roasting that. I was like, did you watch the Marlins last year? Right, he should be higher. <laughs> and he was going to be He any situation, he would come in and just he wipe the lunch. with Nardi. Nardi yeah, was on. Can was those guys match that? I don't know. I do think the bullpen can be all right. Um, actually, I think it could be pretty darn good. But I look at the the lineup. I mean, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be very excited about those guys. I think one of the most underrated things about this Marlins team defense, as, uh, yes, as I think it could be the worst defensive team in Major League Baseball, and that that's a big problem. I think they're going to be fun. I think Marlins fans should be excited to watch them. Yeah. But I think at the end of the day, it's it's 78 and a half. They probably win 74 games at best, and then. I also think that Peter Bendix is going to start to make some moves in the second half if they're not in it to, to build for the future. And I think that's okay. Like, I think the Marlins are planning that. Bendix has said, I don't want to make any monumental moves until I have about a year of understanding the organization, which I think is a great approach. I think he's going to understand within six months who should be here and who shouldn't. Yeah. And I think some of the guys who maybe shouldn't or just he thinks don't make sense to hold on to or they won't extend will be gone. They'll probably subtract at some point at the deadline. You guys hit everything I needed to hit. My thought is pitching health. I actually might like their IL rotation a little bit more than their MLB rotation. That's a problem. It's Sandy, Yuri, Braxton Garrett right now. Those are the front three on that IL rotation. Yep. That is a f nasty IL rotation. Yeah, that's a gross IL rotation. Before we move on to the Nationals, do you have any updates on Yuri? All, all they've said is they're checking, checking yeah. out the bow. I keep looking. I keep researching it. It's just the same just, thing. Yeah, they're we, waiting they're to check playing. out the elbow. I, I'm, I'm waiting anxiously. I know I'm on the under. I hope he's healthy. I hope he shoves. Like, I bet it when Braxton Garrett and Yuri Perez were both projected you to healthy. People keep tagging you. And like, I know. It's like, what's up? Like, 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 I'm not going to go celebrate an injury. Yeah. I, that's not a part of the cap. I bet it thinking Braxton Garrett – and Yuri Perez, we're going to throw the entire season, and I still like the under. So them getting hurt, like, yes, makes the win total go down, makes the bet look better. 
but I am not rooting for that. That's I not, love Yuri. Yeah, I, mean, I want to watch Yuri Perez. Last thing I'll say too: Jazz Chisholm called me an idiot on on X, <laughs> yeah. so I'm Dunk tripping the under. Work, Dock him another one on the under. Um, the only other thing that I want to add: you know how badly I want Tim Anderson to be great. What I want and what I think is going to happen are two very different things. I so, like that. at the end of the day, he, he, do I love him? Yes. Could he be a one win player? Yes. See, that's the difference. I want Cal Quantrill to succeed with the Rockies, and he will succeed with Daddy. That's, that's coming up. You manifest. I don't <laughs> manifest. All right, we're going to wrap with the Washington Nationals uh, in terms of the NL East, and the Nats are a projected sixty six and a half wins right now. The Nats have Natitude, which is the pro. The con is is the roster. Uh, <laughs> Good point. Yeah. <laughs> Where do we go here? Um, Aram, you first. I mean, we just scouted them yesterday. I, I came away thoroughly impressed. They did win Ted Watt. I came away thoroughly impressed with Victor Robles. He actually made, and I'm so pissed. I'm like, he made a great I was, I went to bed last night and I was like mad at Peter because he didn't see the catch. Yeah. I, yeah, I was going to go water. I'm going to try to pull it up like, like, uh, and, and show it to you because it was one of the best catches. I like literally went to bed. I'm like, I can't believe Peter didn't see that. <laughs> like, it was nasty. But no, that's not going to matter um this team is not great but i'm going over i am going over because the total is 66 and a half yeah that's low i mean i just think that's incredibly low for a team that did get better i think they did get better if you look at the roster they won 71 last year like they weren't that bad abrams i know man, peter's going to talk more about it like i wrote a piece in the second half too last year about how much i loved his offensive improvements i think Peter talked about how he going into the leadoff spot really kind of turned him into a more dynamic player, and he leaned into the strengths. I love that. Winker, like, I'm not the biggest Jesse Winker guy, but this is kind of like the last chance for Jesse Winker. Yeah. I think he walks in a little bit more, maybe gives them a little bit more offensively. Manessis hopefully bounces back. Joey Gallo, he's in addition to this team that was running out worse players yeah. last year. You got Ruiz. We'll see how Senzel does. I just think there's, there's repl- more replacement-level players, which is not – exciting but it's better and then the rotation like i think it's about the same as last year i I think mitchell parker joins the fold and cavalli at some point is going to join the fold and like hunter harvey was disgusting harvey was growing he was incredible yesterday i mean part of the first hours send it in he had one of the easiest innings i've ever seen i think it was just three punch outs with like 15 pitches and just 98 by you i think he threw a slider for fun and it was just overwhelming heat now with that said I'm going under. I think this team could end up being the worst team in Major League Baseball. I think it's not. Disagree. So, so let me give you the pitch, yeah. and and then um, and then we'll go back and forth. So when I look at their roster right now, I'm excited about C.J. Abrams. Full stop. Right. If we're talking about these veterans that they brought in, you know, if they do anything, they're gone at the deadline. And then what does the roster look like? Right, if we're looking at the rotation, I think Josiah Gray is what he is. Is he a mid fours guy? I think Mackenzie Gore is what he is. Is he a mid fours guy? And then that's your rotation, right? You're talking about potentially guys coming up. Are they? How well are they going to perform? Right, like Jake Irvin is stepping into the three hole. If Hunter Harvey does anything, he's gone. Right, so it's all of these guys who it's like, oh, Joey Gallo could be interesting. Jesse Winker could be interesting. If they are interesting, they will not be Washington Nationals. After the All-Star break. So that's kind of my feeling on the Nationals, that if they perform well in the first half, all of those guys will be gone. And if they don't perform well in the first half, it could be a detrimental season. Besides Harvey, the bullpen is horrible, right? They're not that great of a defensive team. Like, we're looking at the bottom of their lineup here, and it's they're almost automatic outs. I don't see the games in which I say, all right, the Nationals should be the favorites in this game. That's the way I think about win totals. Like, Josiah Graper's kind of anybody. Like, let's say they're in course. The Rockies might be the favorites in that game. So I would go under in the Nationals. I didn't bet it. I go under because I think they win 65 or 66 games. They are not the worst team in baseball. Let's let's get that out of the way right now. You look at the pitching staff for the Chicago White Sox, their opening day starter is making the first start of his professional career. The Oakland A's. Show me that rotation. Show me a guy that is Mackenzie Gore adjacent or Josiah Gray adjacent. There's I think no JP one. Sears is literally no, that much. He's not. I think he is. No, he's not. <laughs> That's a bad take. I 
think he was good last year. That's a really bad take. I think he was good last year. I uh, I, I think JP Sears could be totally. Fine. Josiah Gray was an all star. Can can Sears be an all star? Can JP Sears be an all star? Well, technically, Paul they Blackbird need Venus. Was a, Paul Blackbird was an all star, and technically they need one. So I'm can, pretty surprised. Can JP J- Sears Gray be a mid threes guy? No, but I don't think Josiah Gray can either. Josiah Gray was a mid threes guy last year. He was, he was what three nine, you know, three nine. I, what was JP Sears last that. year? I don't know what was JP Sears. My agenda. But I do, I do just think that the team is just not that bad, and yeah. that's where it stands for me. JP Sears was a four five four, um, not ideal. <laughs> but I, I look also the last thing I'll say is a lot of run for guys like Jacob Young last year. Yeah, I do. I, they do subtract. They did subtract Candelario, but they only got ninety nine games of him, and they still finished over. I just I think they filled in the cracks a bit more. Yeah. I'm interested to see what Eddie Rosario does. For sure. Again, I'm not feeling pumped about this over, but if Kate Cavalli can come up and shove, I, that would be exciting. Uh, they have Rutledge kind of waiting in the wings as well. I mean, like, yeah, hers might make his debut. Hers might make his debut. They like, finally like, have more arms. Like, last year they had no pitching prospects that right. I could even look yeah. forward to maybe coming up at all. And I do think if Abrams makes that all-star leap this year, then they got something special going. I also think Wayne Thomas just continues to get a little bit better each year. Yep. I'm and going over. Wrapping up on the NL East, it's almost like if you were going overs, like I went over on the first three teams, right? You guys went under on the Mets. I then probably have to go under on the Nationals because it's not like every not, single team. Not the really because you're not playing schedule yeah. change, but still the way it's, it's not that most of the time not four teams right. go over. Yeah. So I'm like, I have to pick the unders. If I, if I do like the Mets more, that means I probably like the Nationals yeah. less. 